today I'm going to show you how to do a full metal jacket FMJ for short for catching honey cones and diamonds very simply what we require crochet needle a little bit of heat shrink one little bead a little uh, crimp um, NT swivels uh, it's new on the market it's something I want to show you when we are talking about it piece of number five wire that is doubled a little bit of hollow braid a nano or tenno tuna circle hook I find the best for catching honeycombs and of course our camo wire 90 pound first I'm going to take one and about a half meters of wire This nylon coated wire is much softer, much more supple than conventional wire. It's 7 by 7, it's 7 separate strands, in other words 49 strands of wire. It is brown in colour, so it's very very nice in clear water conditions and as you know, um, honeycombs love clean water. It's a very soft, supple line, it does not kink at all as easily as other wire I mean you can run it through your fingers you can do what you want and it comes out perfectly every very every time <clears throat> I'm gonna take a offset tuna hook and I find the hookup rate is so much better because the hook is offset basically guys what we're gonna do is snell it and it's very important that you start from the bottom up so we go through the bottom of the hook pinch it with your finger wrap around six or seven times it's up to you and try and keep them as close as possible the wraps four five six seven pinch it with your fingers because the stuff does come loose from the top down as you can see over there that is the snell but now what I'm going to do is just take the lighter quickly and melt it. So what we do is we just take our lighter and just lightly melt the plastic as you can see. Here. Pull tight, wet, just to make it set properly and there's your hook pretty much snelled. I'm just going to cut off that little tag end over here and try and cut it off as close as possible and the reason we snell it guys is if a fish inhales it like a honeycomb diamond does that hook twists in every single time doesn't matter how you hold it it always twists in to the side of the mouth okay now what we're going to do is we're going to take about 50 centimeters the longer you can keep it away the better this trace actually works so we give it about 50 centimeters we take our crimp and slide our crimp down over it okay so there we go basically there's the crimp Take round nose pliers, I find that seems to work the best. In the center, squeeze. Then we turn it 90 degrees, squeeze again, 90 degrees, and squeeze again. That basically gives you that kind of effect on it. That will not move. Okay? But just to neaten it up, I'm going to take a little bit of heat shrink, cut a little piece of it off. Slide it on, slide it down to where the start of the actual swivel is. Let me just quickly go one, two, three, and there we go, guys. It's very neat. It actually protects the wire on either side as well, making it a little bit more durable. We're then going to take our little bead, preferably see through. Slide that on and all the way around till the end. 
that. That's basically the stopper. It cannot go any further than that part there. Now, like I said to you guys, this is an NT swivel. If I used a normal swivel, what happens is, as it runs down the wire at an angle, the wire actually gets a pigtail on it. These swivels, I'm just going to open one up and show you. are actually flanged on both sides. So what that does is it's rounded. So there's no sharp points or points or corners on it that can actually create that pigtail as it's running up and down your wire. And of course it'll move 90 degrees, 360. It is the swivel to use. I'm just going to put it on and show you guys. Go through it. And like I said to you, it doesn't matter which way it runs. There are no sharp corners on it to actually damage the wire over there. So as it's going, it stays straight. It doesn't, doesn't bugger up the, the wire. In the long run, it works out a lot cheaper. Okay, basically to finish it off, I'm going to take a um, swivel, power swivel, figure of eight. Open it up, there's your figure of eight forming as you can see. Put your fingers in there to stop any kinking from happening. Get the pliers, pull the tag in reasonably tight. Slide it all the way down. Now, guys, this wire, because it is so soft and supple. You'll see that the knot tends to come loose. Now it's very, very important that you actually pull this knot as tight as physically possible. I like to just grab my hook that I'm using, push it in, and literally pull <coughs> as hard as I can. And then again, just give it a little bit of a kink on the end there so it doesn't undo itself. But this wire, because it's so soft and supple, it actually undoes itself. And that's very important that you pull your knots tight. Okay, cut off the tear again as close as you want. A little stuff. Okay guys, there is the entire trace done. Now guys, your leader will go onto the top of the actual trace. Your sinker will attach to that and you try and make it the same size as the bait. Remember the bait's going to sit down here. So your sinker needs to sit about there. Guys, that's the trace, the FMJ trace for the honey cones and diamonds. Watch tomorrow and I'm going to show you how to bait it up.